Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Kella Price from Healthy Fit, and I'm here with Moni Jefferson. So excited to be talking to her about marketing for success. She is a marketing guru and entrepreneur, and we're so thankful to have her on the show today. Hey, friends. What's up? Thanks for having me, Kella. So glad that you could be with us today. As a business entrepreneur, I know you have a lot of knowledge to share with our audience. You've started a number of businesses, including AMSE and Dog Tags and Heels. How did you prepare to become an entrepreneur? Oh gosh, do you want the whole true story? <laughs> um, actually, so I went to the University of North Carolina at Pembroke and I got a degree in public relations and communications. Um, of course, with a lot of moving around, I did some multi-level marketing. Um, and I feel like that was the gateway to entrepreneurship, but I didn't, it didn't really click until um, probably 2014. My husband was deployed for a year and I started writing a blog called Dog Tags and Heels, which was fun. I was just sharing uh, military life as a mom of a deployed, you know, my member was deployed. Um, and then I started writing for like Lincoln Military Housing and Corvius Military Housing. And I started making, I started to get this taste of like freelance work, but I didn't really know what that was um, as a blogger. And it was great. And my husband came back and we moved and I quickly realized that, um, so I have three kids. Um, at the time, my youngest was going to be going to pre-K. So I was no longer going to have, I was a SAM, which is, I, you know, the acronym stay at home mom. And then I became a wham because then I was like freelancing. So I'm like, I'm a work at home mom. And then I was like, but now I can't do any of those. So what am I going to do? So um, I started looking for work. So I went to the base and I said, hey, I am a military spouse. And these are all the jobs I've had. And these are all my skills. Um, can you help me? And of course, you know, I wrote, rewrote my resume. We did some interview um, style, mock, you know, like practices and, um, you know, went through the whole thing of like how to get a job. Um, I applied for some government jobs, which, you know, you never get those. I feel like nobody ever gets a government job. It's like one, 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 one tenth or one millionth of a percent. Um, but I went, I took the class twice to try to figure out, make sure I had the right words on my resumes, how to apply. Um, it's a very invasive process and it was discouraging. So I started just like looking in the paper for work um, in public relations and communications because that's my skill set. And um, I got some really great interviews and there's one company, I had an amazing interview with them and uh, it was like the third interview. And on that interview, they said, you know, we really think you would be the perfect fit, but we just can't invest in you right now because we know you're going to move, right? There's that, you know, as a corporate company, I understand and somebody who has multiple businesses now investing in somebody is, takes ROI from your business. You have to get a return on investment. So, um, you know, that day I felt like really defeated and I just started an LLC and I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew it was going to be on in public relations or social media or something like that. And I learned to navigate entrepreneur life. And I didn't even know like the word entrepreneur existed. Um, I just was like, I'm out here in the streets, just trying to get clients. I'm networking. I'm going to all these events and passing out my card and learning what an elevator speech was. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's what happened. That's how that all happened. <laughs> And I think your story, I certainly resonate with some of the things you said, because as a military spouse myself, who followed my husband around the country for 23 years, you're literally starting over every time you move, even if you have national or international clients, as you're building your base and you move to a new, new place. You're in a totally new environment and you have to recreate yourself. And that's why I have so many degrees because every time we'd move, I'm trying to figure out how I can fit myself into my new community in my environment, right. make the best use of my skills. And it is very frustrating because there are lots of companies that even if you are overqualified and willing to take a lower pay just to have something to do, 
they don't want to invest in military, which is really unfortunate because they're afraid that you're going to get up and go. Right. Um, and so that becomes a real challenge. And I feel like as we have more uh, dual income families in today's society, I think that's more of an issue for just families at large when they do move. If one of the members is uh, one of the members of the family is working and gets relocated, the same challenge certainly does exist. So what have you learned along the way through your journey of creation and starting up a company and an LLC that would be helpful for new up and coming business entrepreneurs? Um, I would say to make sure you're serving who you intend to serve. Um, when I first, I, I share this all the time with people. When I first started my PR company, I had all types of clients. I had celebrities, I had restaurants, I had uh, beauty salons, I had solopreneurs. I had, there were a lot of different companies that I worked with. Um, and sometimes I was doing work that I didn't enjoy doing. So there are things in the PR and communications field that I don't like to do. And there are things that I really love to do. Um, but I was doing, I was doing it all because I thought that as an entrepreneur and I had that title that that meant what, that's what I had to do. Um, but it wasn't make, some of those things weren't making me happy. And some of those people weren't making me happy, even if I was bringing in great income. So I would say like, stay true to yourself, know who you serve and serve them well. Um, and it's okay to say no. That just means that more doors are going to open for you. That's great advice. As an entrepreneur, I know I love getting to be able to pick the clients that I work for and the types of jobs that I do and have the flexibility that I can do my job and take the entire summer off with my kids mm -hmm. to travel, which we do every year. I know. And I plan for that in my business. So um, that is definitely something that can help keep you energized as an entrepreneur because some people think as an entrepreneur, you make your own hours, so you live the vacation life, but you actually, the, the hustle is real, right? Yeah. We work a lot of hours, and so it's really important to choose jobs and projects that are energizing and not draining to you because you are going to be working a lot to be a successful entrepreneur. I don't know about you, but I, I, I work yeah, a lot. And there's like a huge misconception that like you're just working two hours a day and like you can go have lunch and you can go do this and do that. The, the truth is you actually have to be much more structured than if you work for a company because you have to create your day when you're going to work out when you're gonna have a lunch break, when you're going to take client calls, when you're gonna do client work, when you're gonna do your own brand work, when you're gonna have date night, when you're gonna have lunch with friends. Like, it's not like you just go in and you clock in and clock out at lunchtime and clock back in and then clock out to go to go home. It, it doesn't work like that. And I think that's a huge misconception. <laughs> you know, that it's just like an easy thing. If I take a whole summer off or if I take two or three weeks, with my family, the, the, the month before that is a heck of a month. It's like getting a lot of stuff done so that when I am gone, um, there's not a lot of pieces that need to be picked up and things are done while I'm gone. So it's a lot of work and you have to be self-motivated and disciplined and know when to say no. And um, you know, it's being an entrepreneur is a whole beast of its own. For sure. And I, I find challenge because we're tethered to our device. <laughs> and sometimes I'm on my phone working and my kids think I'm playing and I have to say, you know, I'm working and I show yeah. them what I'm working on. And then I, I have to recognize the line, okay, it's the weekend or we're out doing a family yeah. activity. I'm going to check my messages and then I'm going to put the phone away so it doesn't distract from our family time because this is your lifeline. This is your work right here. Yes. Listen, the phone has like allowed me to do business on the way to and from vacation, emergencies, like, yeah. but yeah, setting those boundaries. And we talk about this so much. And I don't think you can talk about it enough and get enough tips or suggestions or share your frustrations. Cause I think, like you said, first of all, everybody thinks you're on your phone playing some, some social media. 
And it's like, no, I'm not playing on social media. Social media helps my business. So if I'm not on it, my business doesn't exist because everything is virtual, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of educating your family or really sharing with them what it is that you do and plugging them in and not assuming that they know what you do. If you don't show them, they don't see the bigger picture of like creating graphics, creating copy, then you schedule it in this program that you have to approve it and the hashtags and the time, like there are all these things that go into it. You're just not on their plane. Then you have people who comment, people who reach out on messenger. So absolutely. Um, and then blocking off that, those boundaries are really important. And I struggle with that. Oh my gosh, my marriage struggled with that so bad in the beginning. Cause I felt that I had to respond right away or like had to be available right away. And if not, the opportunity was going to go by, or I seemed like I wasn't a professional business person because I didn't, I wasn't quick to do it. And I realized that it's going to be there, right? It's going to be there. And um, so, yeah, absolutely. Boundaries and sharing like what you're doing with your family is really important. We talked a little bit about this, about you creating opportunities. As an active duty Air Force spouse, how have you managed your career amidst moving and supporting your spouse's career? Um, discipline and then creating systems and processes that work while I'm not able to actually work in my business. So that means making investments into programs or outsourcing work so that while you're moving, while you're, you know, you're PCSing or there's a deployment or there's a TDY going on or, you know, the crazy work hours that your business still goes on during those times. So setting up systems, you know, systems are, you know, calendar schedules, automated responses in your emails, um, you know, anything that's going to take manual work out of it. Um, And then, you know, outsourcing. Outsourcing can be invaluable during a PCS and I've always done it. I've always gotten somebody on board just to at least be available for emails or the Facebook group or anything like that. Like that has helped a lot. Um, With AMC, I have an amazing co-founder that picks up the pieces when I am during a PCS or moving or things or military life is unexpected. And so it's great to also have an amazing co-founder. For sure. I found that when you need to outsource or your business is growing and you want to uh, step back a little bit and focus on specific tasks, this is a great opportunity to find another uh, potential spouse that's maybe underemployed or wants to get some new skills and give them an opportunity to shadow you and learn from you and kind of mentor them. And this has been a great way that I have been able to grow, continually grow my business and support the military community and other up and coming entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. by helping them learn skills that they can take with and run with um, in the future. You also have kids. And I know as a working mom and I work from home. So it's crazy all the time. Homeschool my kids. <laughs> What's your mom tip for managing time and creating quality moments with your kids? Oh gosh, this is a hard one. And I'll be honest, I struggle with mom guilt like every day. <laughs> it's just, I, it, it, you wouldn't be a good mom if you didn't struggle with mom guilt. I, mean, I think I we all have with mom it. guilt. It's, it's, there. seriously <laughs> all the time um and it's funny because uh, we were laying in bed the other day it was like the end of the day and I was going through I go through my day what where I shined or where I showed up where I failed what I could do better and this specific day I was like man I didn't even spend and I feel like I didn't spend any time with my kids I didn't cuddle with them I didn't read with them I didn't play a game with them and my husband was like oh my gosh you're so hard on yourself and I'm like, I want to be it, make sure that I'm showing up for them as much as I show up for my customers, my community. And um, it's easy to forget that, right? Because your family is always going to be there. So I'll say, number one, you have to give yourself grace. I 
try to give myself a lot of grace, although I'm really hard on myself. Um, and then I schedule. So like the weekends, usually I don't work like out of 80% of the time I'm not working at all. So I will do some work. I'll let my family know like, Hey, Saturday, I have to work on a project for two or three hours. You know, will that be okay with you guys? Could you guys swim or could you do this while I do that or whatever? My husband's like, you know what? I get it. Go ahead and do it. Um, when I, before AMC launched, I had multiple clients and of course I have other businesses. So the first Saturday of the month, I would have a work day. It would be an entire work day. Um, and my family knew that. And so just creating boundaries and awareness, um, and you know, create the boundaries, boundaries and awareness and give yourself grace. And, um, you know, just know you're doing the best that you, you can and your kids know it too. So, and they see you working hard, so they're proud of you. That's great advice. I know that I try to spend as much time with my kids, but not just the amount of time, but really having quality time, typically, uh, meal times, breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and dinner we spend together. I love to work out with my kids. That gives me so much joy to see them yeah. uh, exercising their bodies and doing something fun uh, with me in that way. But it, it is hard sometimes. We, we do have to give ourselves grace. And sometimes the things that stick out in our kids' memories and that they look back on are things not necessarily that we thought were any big deal, but end up being really um, special or important to them. So having yeah. those conversations and planning out fun things, yeah. uh, whether it's, you know, making a special recipe or going somewhere is a great way to keep them connected. I'm gonna call. As a Latina woman in business, what challenges have you faced and how have you overcome those? Um, goodness. I feel like sometimes I'm the only Latina in the room. What's wrong? Okay. Um, I, sometimes as, you know, the only Latina, sometimes I am the only one in the room, um, but I've learned to embrace it because I think it gives other people an opportunity to be around someone that, that doesn't necessarily look like them or have the same culture and background. And I found that my experiences have been very good. Um, I've always been well received um, and it's been a really great way for me to share my heritage or my background with others. That's great. I think it's really important to embrace our heritage and educate other people about our background and our own personal experiences, whether it's our race or ethnicity or something else unique about us, like our military culture, or in my case, my children's, um, my children being adopted. So um, I think that's really important. If a new business wants to use social media in an impactful way, what's the best platform to use and why? Let me pick your brain there. So social media, we just talked about this yesterday in our masterclass over at AMC. Social media is a tricky thing. Some people don't even want to get on it because they're like, it's overwhelming, it's inundating. So I like to break it up this way. If you're not talking about your business on social media, you can't expect other people to talk about it, which means that you're not going to get clients. You're not going to become the expert. You're not going to get the visibility you need to build the business, which is your overall goal is to build your business, right? Everybody's on social media. You think of the way you consume information. The first place you go to is social media. Like that's where you go. That means that you have to be on there too. Um, as far as platforms, I definitely say you definitely want to make sure where your B2B and where your B2C people are. So business to business, business to customer, where is your customer consuming? your information, mostly on Facebook, 
probably Instagram, and of course, LinkedIn. I would definitely say if you're a business, you have to be on LinkedIn if you're raising any type of funding, if you're looking for partnerships, um, and just to look professional overall, LinkedIn is the place to be. Um, Facebook, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's so robust right now in the way that they're evolving it and expanding it. And it's it's the numbers, I, I would say it's the first place people go to when they are looking for who you are and what you do. They go to Facebook. Um, then from Facebook, they'll link on your website. So have a landing page, um, be on one or two social media platforms. You don't have to be everywhere. Don't feel like you have to be on every single social media platform because everybody else is doing it. You don't know what is happening behind their keyboard. They could have a team. They could have an audience on Twitter or TikTok. Now there's TikTok. Goodness, now we get to worry about that. Um, you know, there's so many different places to show up but you have to make sure your people are on there. So if you're not getting anything on TikTok or Twitter, you probably don't need to waste your time being on there because your time is invaluable as a solo entrepreneur. For sure. And there's never enough hours in the day. I know I use uh, tools like Hootsuite to cross post things and try to save me as much time as possible. Um, because as a business entrepreneur, I feel like I'm always getting pulled in different directions. You know, you have to manage your marketing and you have to manage your client retention and you have to manage your finances and your budgeting and operations and all of these different Contact, aspects. Payroll or all of, you're wearing like all the millions of hats. <laughs> all the hats. How does one decide that they need PR help and is it expensive? Um, so funny you asked that. I actually talked about this yesterday too. Public relations in general, if you are putting yourself out there into the world, you're already implementing some of it. It just depends on if it's being effective. So public relations overall is to help you achieve your short-term goal and your long-term goal by implementing tactics that you create in a strategy for your overall objective. A lot of times people will go straight into the tactics, which is just posting on social media and thinking like, oh, I posted, I checked that box, yay, I'm out in the world. But why did you post it? What was the strategy behind it? Where is the ROI? Where are we watching that? Where do you, what was the overall objective on your social media plan? So a lot of times um, they'll come to me and they'll say, well, I am, I'm posting or um, they'll think they don't need PR because they're a small company or they're a solopreneur. Well, the fact is you're already doing your PR. Like I said, like you believe it or not, you're already doing it. <laughs> so you might as well do it the right way. And this, I gave this analogy yesterday in um, my class. You have to make sure that all of your ducks in a row are, or your backyard is taken care of. I call it your PR backyard. Like you're inviting me over for a barbecue. What is the first thing you're going to do? You're going to make sure your landscaping is on point, your weeds are pulled, your flower beds look great. You set up the ambiance, you have your table, you know, all of your things. You have to make sure that those things are all taken care of so that when I come over to hang out, I'm happy and I want to come back, right? I know who you are, representation of um, the organization or who you are. And so I talk about PR in that aspect. Even if you're a small business, there are things you can do. Have a landing page, make sure you're scheduling social media, make sure you have a call to action on your social media. So you're just not talking about your product, but you're also sharing behind the scenes, who you are and your why, and also selling because we're getting sold to 24 seven on social. So it's good to share instead of just your logo, who you are on social media so people can tap into that and feel like they're a part of the journey and understand the story, which can build brand evangelism, make you an expert, and then they purchase your product. So yes, PR is expensive, which is why a lot of people feel like they can't hire a PR strategist. Some organizations have a retainer. Some organizations offer um, consultations, monthly consultations, where you sit down and kind of have a conversation like this on how to implement. They give you all the tools you need, then you go and do it. You know, the client, the per the client goes and, and does it. Um, and then some people have full teams. PR can get super expensive, but if you can't afford it. There are things that you can do to you know, make it possible. 
You have created and raised capital for three military lifestyle apps, not just one, but three, uh, the Milcam, Mill Emoji, and my ultimate PCS. How did you come up for the ideas for these and how did you go about seeking capital? Absolutely. So first of all, I didn't even know that I had to seek capital. I just had this idea and I didn't even realize that that was something that I needed to do. Um, so the mill, the mill cam um, actually came to me one day I was taking a photo and I was like, oh man, I really like to put like something about PCSing over this photo. And so we created that. It's basically a filter photo, filter app. Shortly after that, Facebook started creating it on as a picture you could create it and then use it as a picture profile so um that kind of came to me that way um the mill emoji came to me you know just kind of text messaging somebody one day I was like man I'm putting all these acronyms I really wish I could just put a sticker and message back and forth um and so we created that um and that's been fun it's still available on the iOS store and then my recent one, which is my ultimate PCS, co-founded with Maria Reed, who's from Moving with the Military. Um, I came up with that idea because I had just PCS and I had purchased a PCS binder, which is basically like all these printables, put holes in them, put it in order, created all this. I had this big old binder. I was filling it out for, I hate writing. One thing you know, I hate pen to paper writing i have the worst handwriting so it became very it just became a big thing um and i was like man this would be so much easier if it was an app and um so i started creating it with the same developer that had helped me create the other two and uh, found maria in a group that she had asked about a pcsing app i reached out to her and i was like hey so i'm working on that and she's like oh i am too and so instead of competing we collaborated and so that's how those came about um, raising capital is a whole other beast and I had zero idea what raising capital meant. Um, it was a big game changer for me. Um, but I learned very quickly that if you have a purpose and a mission and an impact and you reach out to organizations who that is part of their strategy and their budget that year that you could can raise capital to help build your business. And so we've done that and we've done well. Um, PCS season's on hold, so the app needs, it needs more downloads. So if you haven't downloaded it, head over and download it. It's free and it's on iOS and it's on, it's in the um, Google Play Store. Um, and we are currently looking for investors. So if you're interested, hit me up. Let me know if you're interested in chatting. That's great. As founder of Mill Spouse Creative, the global networking community for Mill Spouse entrepreneurs that has mentorship and resources, what kind of things do you provide to support military spouse entrepreneurs? Um, so that group was created back when I first started my business because I had nowhere to like ask questions of like-minded individuals. That community itself is its own resource. The spouses in there are the resources amongst each other. Um, their expertise are resources and support and mentorship amongst each other. That group has, that community has created their own unique, um, I don't know, how, gathering place is what I want to call it. They, that group was an idea that I had and then they've taken it and they ran with it. I've just listened to what their needs were and implemented strategies and brought people in as ambassadors to take over from different areas of business and expertise to help um, facilitate and help um, invest into that group. So the ambassadors come in every week. We have ambassadors for the year. Um, they do a lot of pro bono work, basically. They're in there sharing things that people pay them hundreds of dollars to do. Um, and then we've recently expanded it and added it onto Marco Polo. So now you can join channels by Marco Polo with the Mill Spouse Creative and actually talk to the ambassadors on Marco Polo, which makes it really fun because we're all like still in the house. So you can kind of talk and communicate. Um, but no, that group, you know, we offer monthly themes, the ambassadors, um, and then the daily prompts 
that engage and will, um, they create conversation. Um, but that group itself has created the, um, the culture and um, the way that it is. So I'm really proud of that community. And it's great to have a community of like-minded business driven people that you can go to for networking and just to bounce ideas off of that helps you grow as an entrepreneur. And I, I feel like helping others and building them up and giving them the tools that they need is a great way for me to mentor them and help them grow because we're not competing with each oh. other. Even if we're in the same industry, there's more than enough business to Absolutely. go around. Girl, preach. Goodness, there's more than enough for everybody. <laughs> and that's what we talk about too in the Mill Spouse Creative. That's why there's a collaboration thread. Like collaborate with other people that are like-minded or maybe somebody that you didn't think would benefit from your service or whatever. Like collaboration is how I've built all my businesses. I've done it by giving and I've done it in collaboration with other people. So absolutely. Your most recent venture, AMC, which you mentioned earlier, the Association of Military Spouse Entrepreneurs, connects military spouse influencers and freelancers with organizations, kind of like a connection so that they can support the military community. I recently was uh, able to provide a stretch mobility and recovery live exercise session on the platform. And we have some other partnerships planned. What other types of opportunities and services does this group provide? So AMC, I am super proud of AMC. Um, I, cre we cre I created it with co-founder Flossie Hall, who's a genius and she's phenomenal. So if you haven't had a chance to connect with her, please head over to our website, amc.co. You can learn a little bit more about her entrepreneurial background. Um, so AMC came to Flossie and I um, probably late summer 2019. Um, and we just saw that there was nobody servicing military spouse entrepreneurs specifically. Um, it's very, very niche. Um, and it's a very unique um, community. Um, we offer a free and a paid membership. Um, you get a digital dashboard with the login, you get resources, access to our new program, program called Doing Business the AMC Way coursework that'll walk you through your business in bite-sized chunks of things to do from like insurance and finances and go to market strategy and just getting started. And what we're finding is that spouses that are coming into our organization, they're making money, they're working, or they have a business and they're not making money and they have no idea how to get started. And then they get inundated with the school of Google and then they get deflated and they're like, I'm done. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I don't wanna ask the questions because I feel dumb if I ask the questions or I just, I don't even know where to go. And it can be overwhelming. You're a business owner. You, you have to be able to either get through those or have a community to really support you and say, hey girl, hey guy, I got you. Been there, done that. This is what we can do. Let's get on a call, whatever. So um, they offer, you know, we have the digital dashboard. We have master classes, co-working spaces and a lot with our members. Right now we're about 720 members. So yay, we're excited about the growth since last November. Um, our members get access and um, collaboration opportunities. Like we want to collaborate with spouses like you. We want to highlight you guys. We want to showcase your skill sets or your talents with the world because that is what makes us military spouses so unique. And um, and and it's a collaboration effort. AMC is all about collaboration. If you look at our community partners and our corporate partners, it's all about collaboration. Um, and so, yeah, AMC is on a podcast. We have the membership. Um, we have the co-working space along with the membership and the master classes that our partners like HubSpot or LinkedIn, they come in and teach these classes and you're able to ask them questions um, applicable to your business. So it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm loving it. It is my baby. We are doing it. We're excited about, we just made the announcement uh, yesterday in August we have the Military Spouse Entrepreneur's Guide that's going to be distributed across the globe at different bases. Um, I think we have about, it's going to be 
80,000 80, are gonna be distributed in print and it's gonna be digital. So we're excited to really be able to offer this opportunity to spouses who go on bases and say like, like I told you earlier, my story, I walked onto the base and I said, hey, I would like to look for work. I want to do something with my life. You know, like I have a degree and I have all these skills. And now they can say, here's all the resources to build a career and go on interviews and apply for jobs. And here's a resource for you to build a business from start. So we're excited about that. And there is a robust amount of resources and activities constantly going out on in your events. I get emails all the time and on your Facebook page about things happening. So it's super exciting to see all of the different ways that entrepreneurs can network together and grow and learn and really excel their business and their business skills. Yeah. I am a huge exercise junkie, yes, fitness I coach, and I saw you were a, a spin junkie. I'm assuming that means you like spin class or are you a I DJ? Do. I even have my own bike. I'm, I like literally, I've, I love getting on that spin bike. I get, it gives me the biggest high. I'm like, people don't understand, like, I guess they have runners high. I get spinners high, but I love, I really love to take care of my body. Um, I want to be around when my grandkids are around. I, you know, want to be able to go hiking and go on trips and not be tired. So I do believe too, as an entrepreneur, we always put that on the back burner. And I think the first year of my business, I like stopped going to the gym. Like I said, I didn't have boundaries. I was like, yeah, I can work for all the people and do all the things. And yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but now I add working out to my schedule. It is part of my life. Um, spin is a big, big thing. I love spinning. I just added kickboxing. <laughs> That's fun. I teach MMA cardio kick. You'll okay. have to check it out online. I so what, what advice do you have for business owners, women and entrepreneurs in terms of self-care and work-life balance? I say, if you're an entrepreneur like me, use this thing and schedule your workouts consider yourself an appointment, show up. If you keep counseling on that same client every week or every day, that client's not going to want to work with you. So I would say, treat yourself as a client and schedule all your workouts, schedule your date nights, schedule your, you know, journaling, your writing time, you know, have that whole be honorable to yourself, right? Because you don't want to not show up for a client or your community. So do the same thing for yourself. Hold yourself accountable to yourself and show up for yourself. So that would be my number one thing, just mental health wise and physical physical health. Like put it in your phone and have it as a as an event. That's a great piece of advice. I tell my clients that all the time. Schedule that workout, make the commitment to yourself because you're more likely to skip that workout if it's not a hard and fast scheduled item. And it helps, it does help keep you accountable, especially if you're working out at home and you're not going to the gym right now and you don't have a, a, a workout partner or a trainer that you're working with. I hit my clients up if they don't uh, post or show up for my workouts. But if you're working out by yourself, you have to hold yourself accountable. It's like that saying when you get on the airplane to put your own mask on before First. you help someone else. And it, it's the same thing, taking good care of yourself. Even if you're working at home, keeping that schedule and doing your professional development and doing your exercise and taking time for you to eat lunch. Yes. So oh my gosh. Yes. That one is so easy to skip. I'll be like, yeah, I'm eating. I'm typing. Like it is so easy to do that. But yeah, having those little lunch breaks are nice and you deserve them. You work hard. For sure. And it helps your productivity throughout the whole day. If you, you know, stick to that schedule and you take care of your body and you give yourself those breaks for lunch and you drink enough water, yes. um, it, it helps with your productivity. It's scientifically proven. Um, and we all want to be productive when we're in our, in our office space and, and with our clients. 
Well, I have enjoyed talking with you so much today. It's great hearing about how you're supporting entrepreneurs and you gave us some great tips for uh, propelling our business forward and some tools that we can take forward and some resources that we can look at. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thanks for having me.